welcome to Six Pack Philosophy, where we take philosophy, mix it with beer, and apply it to the questions you deal with every day. Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy. I'm Anastasia here with Mike and John, and this week we're discussing the theory of truth. But before we get started, what are we drinking, guys? We are drinking conspiracy theory. From the Southern Star Brewing Company in Conroe, Texas. Uh, this is another IPA here, uh, so we, we will You're see. You get th- thank six, you, thank you. It's a 6.5 ABV. 6.5. For fuck's sake. I spilled my okay. beer. Okay, okay. All right. So we are talking about the problem of truth. Last week we talked about honesty and why you should be honest, uh, but we didn't. W- well, and we talked about whether or not you should be honest. Be fair. Okay, we talked about whether or not you should be honest and when you should be honest and all the problems with honesty, but we never really talked about what truth was. Yeah, there's to a be difference honest. between honesty and truth. Oh, yeah, yeah, we just like jumped right past that. Yeah, we just assumed you knew, right? But maybe, maybe you, know, you don't. You know, I assumed I knew as well until we I know. read some of this stuff and and, and discovered I I, didn't, I don't know shit. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I, I think that the the first place to uh, start is is to actually kind of articulate the problem. Um, it's always a good place to start. Yeah, well, and and this is an interesting one because the problem of truth is is really easy to state but really hard to answer. Um, what truths are and what, if anything, makes them true? The problem is distinct from the problem of skepticism and that skepticism asks the question of the reality of the universe and the things in it. The problem of truth asks linguistically what connection or criteria must exist between a statement and the universe in order to assign it the property of truth. And it's John Reed's on Six Pack Philosophy. Oh, there's going to be a lot of John Reed's. Oh, oh, oh that's, shit. This God. is that episode. Get <laughs> this ready is that for episode. It. Okay. All right. So take me on this voyage, John. Okay. So th- this is a question that has been being asked uh, since the, uh, the ancient Greeks and probably beyond. Uh, since the start of philosophy, this one has, has really been there. And throughout the journey, <coughs> there have been a couple of theories that have come out of this. Uh, first, I want to start talking about the neoclassical theories, because these, these were really the, the first um, theories that came out of this, even some of them before they really had a name for what this theory was. So, so the first one I want to talk about, and it seems fairly intuitive, is the correspondence theory. Um, the, the correspondence theory is the basic idea that what you say has to correspond to something in the world, right? So I can say that this koozie is red. And all I'm stating is that the, the physical object, the koozie, has a property of redness that those two things they go correspond. To, they correspond. They go together and, and correspond to, to something in reality. Now this seems easy and intuitive uh, until you start to dig into the details. A couple problems with, uh, with correspondence theory. While it does really well at answering uh, problems that uh, talking about things in the real world it, it absolutely has no uh, um, way to deal with abstract things that we would call true. And in fact, th- there could be an argument made for the idea of this koozie being red because when we talk about the philosophy of aesthetics, we talk about redness being a property of the mind and not a property of objects. This, this koozie reflects a certain electromagnetic wave but redness is what happens in my mind and we can see that when we have a dream and anything in the dream is red there was no electromagnetic pulse there but even even stranger than that is when we start to get into our scientific and mathematical theories Uh, we have this idea that i think most people are fairly comfortable with that two plus two equals four minus one that's three quick maths quick maths but what does that mean in reality show me in reality this truth that two plus two equals four. You can't just show the truth by having two objects and two objects and then counting them and saying there's four objects? Well, I mean, maybe maybe you could in some instances. So you could say you take two cows and you put it with two other cows and you have four cows in a pasture. But let's talk about uh, other systems. Some deal with process, some not so much. So I remember you, in school when they said one plus one equals three. I was in the sex ed class. <laughs> well, and that's a good point. So you have 
two people that, that come together and domicile and all of a sudden there's three people. Well, that truth of, of one plus one equals two didn't really hold in that. You can also talk about things that aren't, aren't easily uh, quantifiable, right? So you have two oceans that meet. Does that, do you have really two oceans or is it just one bigger ocean at that point? With, with subdivisions, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So as long as, as long as you have strong material boundaries, it's easy to understand. But without it, you, when you get into the, to variances in there, that starts to break down. Oh, yeah, yeah. So any abstract thought that you might have that you can't physically express in the real world, not just math, but you, you get into higher ideas like uh, integrals and stuff like this, it really starts to become hard to say how we can say that any math problem is true using this uh, uh, correspondence theory. So, some philosophers got together and they decided to... Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, I think you have to have a, a, a reasonable understanding of math. Um, and that that's a really poor example of demonstrating truth. Okay. Because math is just a symbolic representation of... Of things that we've experienced well, time but, and time but, again, but, but e even beyond that, even if you let, 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 let's leave math and let's let's look at other examples there where where, where vocab is what's important. Okay, uh, if I decide if, if I broke out the song right here, I would say that I am singing. Mm -hmm. If you heard me break out in song here, you would not say that what I was doing is singing, and we would both be right. Who who who? What, what's the truth there? Because what I'm doing is probably not at all like singing. Yeah, There's a okay. definition there. You, 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 <laughs> yeah. you see what I'm, what I'm yeah. That's just an easy, easy one to yeah. throw out yeah. there. Well, and, and I would argue with you about, I, I would say you're probably right in the early stage of math when math was for uh, uh, merchants and farmers to count. Counting. How many, yeah. That very early stage of math, I think you're right. And, and I was trying not to get too mathy here. But I think when you start to talk about number theory, what are prime numbers? Explain that to me in, in reality. Mm -hmm. uh, what When we start to talk about tesseracts and higher dimensional uh, uh, geometry and how that interacts, explain that to me in the mm -hmm. world. I think there are entire fields of math that we can't make truth statements about using just correspondence theory. Well, and I'm saying I don't think you can make truth statements about math, period. Well, I, I think correspondence theory would agree with you. Right. So, anyway. Um, next we have, so so a bunch of philosophers got together. They looked at this fact, and it was, it was a little disturbing to them, as I think uh, it would be to many people who are faced with this dilemma. If they got it. Yes. I'm not that smart. Well, you just explained it really well. A, a so little maybe. bit, a little bit, but it's, but, but it, it, it's still, it's still very, uh, uh, I don't know what the word is. I still think that we understand that 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 that, that these are real things, and we understand what the what, what what the truth is. But you know, you can stretch something and make it make it very difficult. And I feel like that's what correspondence theory is doing is it's it's stretching out to the outs, outside outside here, and then it becomes very confusing to us. Yeah. 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 So uh, the the response, the the way that that they decided that they were going to fix this dilemma in truth is they kind of pulled away from reality and they started looking at a new theory called coherence theory. And coherence theory's basis is that one, the reality has no truth. Truth is something that is derived completely in the mind of the person assigning if something is true. For instance, if you took a rock and you asked it the, the question, uh, is it true that grass is green? The, the rock would have no response because it has no need of truth. It, it just, it is or it isn't. Or is it? Well, that's a that's question a for show. the rock. Anyway, um, <laughs> so we came up with coherence theory. And co what coherence theory says is that a belief is true if and only if it is part of a coherent system of beliefs. So what coherence theory says is you can call your belief true. If all your beliefs taken as a whole, none of them conflict with one another. If your belief system as a whole 
uh, uh, fits together, then you can call it truth. And this works really well for the math stuff we talked about earlier. We can take all these mathematical rules, all these these models we have of the universe, and we can say, do they conflict? If the answer is no, we, we consider that we have a good model. If the answer is yes, then we, we try and tweak and fix the model to make them not conflict. In fact, one of the, the, the biggest uh, conflicts in science right now that, that scientists are working to fix is the conflicts between uh, uh, relativistic um, uh, physics and uh, um, quantum physics. So, so these two are, have some conflicts and, and science sees this as a really big deal because uh, uh, many scientists uh, in the way they think about truth are coherence theorists without knowing that they are. Uh -huh. So uh, uh, that's, that's basically coherence theory in a nutshell. That was a tough one for me to get my hands around. Yeah, I mean, does, does everybody feel like they have an understanding of it? Because this one is really a little bit more abstract than, than the uh, uh, correspondence theory. So the question arose to me, um, if, if, if truth is, um, is only what you perceive it to be, and people can perceive, I guess, give the example of um, somebody with like legitimate diagnosable delusions mm -hmm. who genuinely and honestly perceives and believes there to be fairies that dance from their fingernails. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, would that not qualify under coherent theory? Yeah, as long as all their beliefs taken as a whole don't conflict with each other, yeah, that, that would that would qualify as a truth under uh, coherence theory. Oh, okay. Um, and, and so that's, that's one of the big criticisms of this, is that uh, coherence theory allows for a, a broad range of, of beliefs that... Uh, um, one may not that many may not call true, but if somebody can can argue them without conflicting with anything. So on a coherence theory idea, your truth can be different than my truth. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, and and I, I think there's probably a conversation to be had between a global co coherence theory and an individual's coherence theory. But since uh, this whole idea arises at, from the idea that truth is in the mind of the beholder, then my truth doesn't have to. Uh, jive with your truth, unless we talk about like a group consciousness of the of the, you know, yeah, that, that, all of society. That drives me crazy. Yeah, that drives yeah. me crazy because words mean things, and truth has a meaning to me. That 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 if it's not true for everybody, it's not true, and that's. Uh, and, and while I understand the the theory here, it just it, it's very very difficult for we, me. We we have you know, there's a, a broad range of of. People that subscribe to different beliefs. For instance, there are certain pres presidents who love co uh, coherence theory <laughs> yeah, yeah. because they, they don't have to correspond to anything in reality. Um, but it does have the problems that you mentioned. And and many people have, are t have said exactly what you said. Well, truth means something. And it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a real property. And we can't arbitrarily have How one. How can we identify it? Well, that's what we're working on right now. That's that's the show we're doing. And and good fucking luck cuz I've never seen anybody else do it. Yeah. So, um well, to, to me to me this one this one uh lends itself extremely well to religious arguments. Mhm. Mm yeah, it does. Uh, where you, you know uh your your intrinsic beliefs, what you believe becomes your truth. And there's a difference <laughs> between belief and truth to me. And, and, and I think under this one, there, there isn't so much. Mm -hmm. Your belief is your truth. Yeah. Well, Am I understanding that right? Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. It sort of destroys a lot of religious arguments of if you don't believe my particular religion, you're going to hell. Well, no. What I believe, if, if I'm... Pick a religion. Muslim, Islam. Uh, I, if I'm uh, Islamic and you're Christian and I believe that if you don't believe what I believe, then you're going to hell. And you believe that if I don't believe what you believe, then I'm going to hell. And you're, each of your truths is your truth. If each, if then each you're one both is true. fine and neither of you are going to hell. Or, or, or you're both going to hell. Well, no, 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 no. Well, I mean, if 
I guess if there is, if, if both if, are equally true, if I'm a true. Christian and I'm yeah. not saved, yeah. If, if both, if both are equally true, though, everybody's going to hell. But it's only true for you. So, whatever yeah. you believe, you're going to heaven, and what you believe has literally no impact on everybody else. Well, and this gets back to the thing you said earlier of if you tried to sing, you would believe you were singing uh, and then Anna would say you weren't singing and which one is the truth? And and uh, a coherence theorist would say yes. Yes, they're both true. Yeah. They're both true. So uh, there's one more of the neoclassical theories of truth that I want to talk about real quick. <laughs> this is the pragmatist theory I of like truth. I like this one. Yeah, shocker. So the have, you know, <laughs> it was it was interesting. John likes this one too, whether he knows it or not. The pragmatist theory of truth says that truth is a toolkit. It's not an individual uh, uh, binary yes or no. It's a toolkit used to convey meaning, and the toolkit has to be taken as a whole. And that something is a statement is true if the statement achieves its end. Yeah. Okay. It also says that a uh, uh, peer slogan tells us that true beliefs will remain settled at the end of prolonged inquiry. And so that's kind of what we do here. We take a belief, we put it forward, and we all kind of attack it. And at the end, if that stands up to inquiry, it's true. This also settles a question that we hadn't addressed earlier with truth that we're going to touch on here, but we're going to get deeper into later. And that is... A, a statement who is ironic, but meant to convey a belief. So when you say something like, I literally haven't eaten in forever. If you, you could look at that and say, well, that's not true because you would be dead. It's not literally true, but it is. But you had a meaning you were trying to yes. convey. And if that statement conveyed the right meaning, then it is a true statement. Yeah. And, 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 and. Get, let me get on my soapbox here again. Words Webster's Webster's Dictionary now has figuratively as a definition for literally. That is fucked up. That is fucked up. He, he's the authority. No, no. Old Webster. He's dead. So uh, I'm just going to move on. Then. Yeah. By the way, John, I, I, when I was reading this, I was thinking about you, that that, that you are, in fact, a, a pragmatic theorist. Uh, and and the reason I came well, the reason I came to this this theory is because uh, I think back to the free will episode where you argued that there is no such thing as free will, mm -hmm. but we should tell everybody there is so they will behave uh, behave properly. Well, I don't know. I don't know that I'm a pragmatic theorist of truth because I was I was uh, arguing that we should lie, which is not <laughs> true. So uh, in, anyway, I just I, I, that that's what came yeah. to my mind when I was reading this is yeah. is you know even if it's not even if it's not true we should tell people it's true because they'll believe it. Uh, there was a, a a piece that I watched. Uh, it was on YouTube by the the secular theist I think was was what was doing it, and it was talking about about religion and the fact that there are these people out there that argue that even if you don't. Uh, uh, or, or, or argue that, that religion must be true, <coughs> Christianity must be true is the one they're talking about here, because uh, if you believe in Christianity, things are better and you behave better, so it must be a true fact. They were using that pragmatic theory to, to justify it. Um, and that, that's kind of where, where it hit me. It, 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 well, and, and that's really the criticism that the pragmatic theory gets from philosophers. So the criticism is that it becomes really difficult to tell the difference in a truth and a successful lie. So, for instance, if you tell your kids, you better be good, Santa Claus is coming on Christmas, and they then behave, you have... Could you have accomplished the goal of your statement, but I don't think many would argue that it was a true statement. It, it, it is. It, well, it's, there you go. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I've argued before. It, it, it's a true statement, which explains why I don't get nearly the cool gifts I used to get and, when I was a kid. And that's why you like the pragmatist that's theory right. of truth. That's right. Uh, absolutely. But but it, it becomes very hard to distinguish these things. Yeah. And people have argued, much like you've argued, Mike, that well, words have meaning, and, and we can't just say that truth uh, uh, that a lie is truth because it was successful. Although pragmatists have disagreed with this, uh, so that that's all the neoclassical ideas of truth, and everything else we're going to be going through has some relation to one of these three theories or multiple of these theories um, 
and and what does truth mean? Um, the next one we're going to get into is going to start off with John reading time and math. Oh my God! Which I know everybody oh. loves. Everybody yeah. loves John reading don't, and math. Don't, don't turn it off yet. Don't turn it off yet. But before we get into the exciting part, do we want to talk about beer? Um. Yeah, let's talk about this beer. I think you want to go first. I see it I, on I, your face. I, 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 I could go first I, if you'd like me to. I, I don't. I don't know that you really want me to. But can I, I just I, do I this be, for Mike? He's going to give it a one point two. I, I would be. I would be glad to go first. This. Uh, this is. We are drinking um, Southern Star Conspiracy Theory. I'm going to tell you what's what's good about it first. It is. It is an incredible can. Uh, it, I, I, I was excited about it when I, when I looked at the can. Uh, now let's talk about what's bad about it, and that's everything else. Uh, it tastes like I licked a cat's butt. It is absolutely terrible to me. Now I understand. I'm to be fair. I am not an IPA guy. I am not at all. The uh, the bitterness in this is is not at all what I what, what I like. The aftertaste is it's to me. And this is this is a problem I have with IPAs generally. Is the aftertaste t tastes like skunky beer to me. It just doesn't have a good flavor to it. It tastes like bad beer, like it's like it like it's beer that beer that's that sat up and, and gone bad to me. Um, I personally would not uh, would not purchase this beer. It's not not my beer at all. It's not. Uh, it's definitely not a not a starter beer for somebody that's getting into it. Um, it's got a nice smell to it. I liked I liked that about it. Um, it's. Um, it's a tough one for me because, again, me not being an IPA guy, but I'm going to give it a give it a give it a low rating because I I've I've had a hard time. It's difficult for me to drink, and I'm going to go uh, I'm going to go one eight. Really? Yeah. Higher than I thought. Um. Well, and and that's actually interesting. I'll go ahead and give my rating. I was actually thinking of a one eight as well. Really? Yeah. I was at a two. Wow. So <laughs> well, I really he, thought y'all were going to be higher being the uh, IPA kind of people, but this just isn't. No, I've had too many far better IPAs. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. realized what an IPA can and should be. So think things that I really like in an IPA, if, if there's a bit of a, a citrus tone, that's good. Though it's not required. Mm. If it's got a smooth transition to the bitters, if it's got a, a, a pleasant fall off. This one misses all of those points. It does. It uh, it teases you with just a hint of sweet as it touches your palate. Soon after that, when you when you think you know it's coming, it quickly punches you with bitter on the back end. Mm -hmm. And it stays there. And it it has and there's no smooth transition to that bitter, but there is a very lingering and smooth transition out of the bitter, and. It's not like the best bitter I've ever had. Some bitters have have complex flavors in there. This is not complex. It is just raw bitter that sits and lingers on the tongue for the duration. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I think the conspiracy theory is that this is a good beer. Um, <laughs> so I really don't have much good to say about I, it. I'm I, really shocked. I think I, you hit man. on the nose. 1.8. Yeah. Um. I think I know what they were going for here. I think they were trying to take a shot at conspiracy theorists and make a genuinely shit beer <laughs> just to, like, give a big middle finger to them. Oh, we're on YouTube. That's yeah. fine. Is it? Yeah. That, I wasn't sure. No, it's good. I guess we are explicit already. Yeah, we're already explicit. I mean, you can... But you don't have to. <laughs> it's not required. Well, it was kind of half-assed earlier because okay. I realized it, so I wanted to... Do it full on. Okay. You just shot yeah. the bird at our audience. <laughs> I love you guys. That wasn't to you. That was to the people that like this beer. Yeah. What if they like the beer? <laughs> then it was to you. Okay. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, no, it, I really like the front end flavors of it. Um, really? And if you hold, if you kind of hold it in your mouth and you don't swallow it, I, I was able to enjoy it for longer, but the moment I swallowed it, it was like, not just hoppy, it was like all stale hops. Yeah. Um, and, and just like all of the crisp green flavor that you get from hops um, was gone, it, which is why it, it seemed kind of stale. Um, 
I can't, I don't know if we've got a, an old batch. I know I haven't seen this in, um, in the store that we get our beer at in a long time, but, um, so I would imagine this is probably a fairly fresh batch. Um, but it just, it tasted stale you know once it, you kind of swallow it. It almost tastes like, as I think about it, and you, cinnamon's the same way. You, you'd be surprised of all the sweet things that you eat cinnamon of. When you chew up a piece of cinnamon or any piece of bark, and then you spit it out, and that just sits yeah. in your mouth. Like, you can't, you've spit all the wood out, and you just, it's still there. He chews a lot of bark. Not, well, oh, yeah. you know, whatever it takes. Yeah. It, it, it kind of reminds me of, Whenever you were young and poor and you had the, the, <clears throat> the beer and you put it in the refrigerator and then you took it out for a party and you left it in your car for a few days and then put it back in the fridge, that's kind of the flavor you get here where you get that bad beer. Bit, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I used to do that a lot. <laughs> so. What was the ABV on this one? 6.5. 6.5. Yeah. So it's not even going to get you drunk enough to enjoy it. So yeah. we're at like a... Well, one nine something there. Yeah, yeah, one nine something like that. Something like that. All right, so, uh, lawnmower beer. Yeah, sure. Why not? I I I, I don't want to put it under the lawnmower. Yeah, uh, it's not that I, bad. <laughs> I, I, I think I think it'd be an okay beer for a lawnmower. It's not what I would drink, but if you're an IPA guy, yeah, sure, whatever. You're not going to fuck up and run over your your, your uh, you know your azaleas if you're drinking this. So yeah. Uh, breakup date, whatever one that breakup is. Breakup date. Yeah, I mean, just just to stick it one more time right before this, you. This leave. is the beer that you buy that girl that just follows you around the bar that you want to get rid of. Yeah, yeah. yeah here, drink this. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is not getting you laid. It shouldn't. If it does, she's got problems. He's got problems. Whoever it is that you're trying to fuck has got problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely. Um, so fun story. <laughs> when I was going to get today's beer, I. I had scanned the uh, the whole aisle trying to figure out what exactly I wanted. I'd kind of picked this one out and thought, you know, it goes with the the name of it at least kind of goes with what we're going to be talking about mm -hmm. today. Um, so I had already gone through. I looked at it. It was the best out, uh, name out in the I whole everything works. that we it had. It works. Yeah, it works. Thank you. But anyway. Mm. Shut up. Um, so anyway. Works-ish. I had picked out two beers that I was I was into and um, and there was this one and there was the other one and so like after I'd kind of scanned and I decided this is what I wanted I grabbed that one and I grabbed another one and this guy just turns to me and he looks and he goes I can't pick a beer I know that feel <laughs> I know that feel did you help him of course I helped him good I would have been here like 10 minutes sooner did, did you ask questions leading questions like oh, what, what oh, kind of beer do you like so and here we go <laughs> he goes I can't pick a beer I said Oh, okay. He said, what do you have? I showed him. He said, I don't think I'll like this. <laughs> I said, Probably so, won't. Yeah. I said, okay. Now you can call him and say, you were right. Yeah. Oh, I didn't get his number. I gave him the show, though. But um, he said, uh, I don't think I'll like those. I said, well, what do you like? He said, Bud Light. Well, buy Bud Light. <laughs> <You know? laughs> let, me, let me lead you over to this side of the aisle. Look, he was trying to he find was. the light. He was. Oh, that's no, not what I meant. Yeah, he was not trying to find. He was trying he to find was something trying else. to come no. over to the good side. The dark side. <laughs> he was trying to come to the dark side. The good dark side, side, dark side, same, right? The, uh, yeah, sure. Dark beer, yeah. dark beer. Yeah. Um, and he's like, well, you know, I've I've tried like Dos Equis and I've tried like a. Uh, uh, Shiner and, and Ziggenbach and I, I didn't really like those. I'm not sure I like those dark beers. I was like, fuck. Okay. I was like, well, you'll probably like this one. He's like, I like beer in a bottle, not a can. Buy a glass. <laughs> Just go buy a glass. Yeah. It makes it all better. It makes yeah. everything better. And I realized, I realized, like, we've said a few times that, like, this would be a good transition beer. So I pulled up our, our beer list and was trying to find the ones mm -hmm. that we've we've said would be good transition beers. And I realized we're fucking wrong. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I started showing him some of them. And they were not... He didn't... He was not game for those. Really? So mm -hmm. We got him set up with a land shark, which probably is a good transition that's beer. That's probably a decent transition yeah. beer yeah. for somebody. Yeah. Uh, move... You know, that, 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 that's your one to move into the uh, more... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Adult beer market. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you already have to be 21 to buy could, it. Could you have gotten him a Lefe? It's kind of light, but it's delicious. Oh, that's too. No. Too much? No. Okay. 
No, because that one's kind of sour and it's like yeah, really expensive. Well, I, I think you like, gotta especially go. if you started buying Bud Light, like that yeah. is a huge price. Yeah, job. you got to go one extreme or the other. You've either got to go right there with, uh, you know, your land shark or something like that, mm-hmm. or you got to go all the way to the Duchess with a sour and just shock yeah. the shit out of them. Yeah. Well, and I seriously thought about about trying to find something that was like a, a really dark, rich coffee stout or oh. something oh that yeah. i don't i don't know if you can go from bud light to that yeah, well, well, just have to give him our number that way if he doesn't like it he can give the yeah, other right. five to us right <laughs> well and my thought was those don't even taste like the same drink uh, that's true and so I, I think kind of pulling somebody outside of the idea of this is what beer tastes like and having something that just tastes totally and completely different rather than finding trying to find something on that scale in between but, so I think the moral of this story is don't listen to us. We live in an ivory tower of beer. There, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Hey, if you're, if you're drinking Bud Light, go try the Alamo beer. I think that'd be a good oh, yeah, thing for good. you to, yeah. to, mix, to, to cross through with. All no, right. I like that for a light beer. So, yeah, you know. fine. Are we ready for John Reedy Math time? Uh, sure. Yay. Okay, so we're going to talk about a little bit about... Can you read it in voices? Mine. This oh. is the one I have. We're going to talk a little bit about Tarski and Tarski's theory of truth. Tarski and Hutch. I don't know who Hutch so You is. went to Tarski and Hutch, and I was thinking about it sounds like a Star Trek character. I don't, who's Tarski Star and Trek. Hutch? That's Trek. totally backwards. Okay. All right. So for the math, try to keep up. This won't be too long. All right. Let us suppose that we have a fixed language L whose sentences are fully interpreted. The basic question Tarski poses is what an adequate theory of truth for L would be. Tarski's answer is embedded in what he calls Convention T. An adequate I, theory of truth for L. I, I'm, this is reading time, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. An adequate theory of truth for L must imply that for each sentence phi of L, the sentence phi is true if and only if phi. <laughs> Excuse me. One of his insights is that if the language L displays the right structure, then the truth for L can be defined recursively. For instance, let us suppose that L is a simple formal language containing two atomic Mm. sentences. The two sentences are snow is white and grass is green. And the sentence connects or and and. In spite of its simplicity, L contains infinitely many distinct sentences, but truth can be defined for all of them by recursion. (coughs) Base clauses. Snow is white is true if and only if snow is white. Grass is green is true if and only if grass is green. We've turned to stick up your ass PBS shows. The thing is, for anybody watching on YouTube, John will actually be able to put an overlay of this fucking formula. I was actually (laughs) thinking of just putting like random math shots scrolling. God damn it, John. Yeah. (laughs) But for anybody who's actually listening on a podcast app... this is going to be impossible to follow. Well, if you would let me finish, I'm going to come back and, and make work. Okay. Well, I'll try. I hope so. Okay. There's, okay. A lot of, there's a lot of talking. All right. going on. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Recursion. Okay, so i got to go back. Sorry. Sorry. Snow is white is no, 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 true. Stop, stop, stop. You're not starting over. Base clauses. Snow is white is <laughs> Base clauses. Snow is white is true if and only if snow is white. Grass is green is true if and only if grass is green. Recursion clauses for any sentence uh, phi and psi of L. Phi or psi is true if and only if phi is true or psi is true. Not phi is true if and only if it is not the case that phi is true. This theory satisfies convention T. So what we have basically done is build a mathematical model of sentence structure and then introduced some mathematical operators into that sentence structure and we actually when we look at the way that we use language every day uh we we see that we do this on a regular basis right so we make the sentence all the time uh well maybe not all the time this was much more popular when when old people were younger but we might say hey hey sentence diagramming well, we, we might say something like this. Uh, Trump I is, believe in sentence, sentence diagramming. I actually kind of like to. Well, I wouldn't go in there at all. Uh, we might say the sentence, Trump is president or I'm a monkey's uncle. And that sentence resolves true because 
well, and we're recording this in 2018. So we, we say Trump is president equals true. We can add any or we want after that, and it still resolves as a true sentence. And so with that, we, we can get into some really uh, interesting cases uh, with truth where we, we, we find something to be true um, by the math, but it feels untrue. So let me give you an example. Let's say I got a friend, Jeff, who uh, has a, a, a really distinct rainbow colored Ford pickup. And I'm at work, and I look out the window, and I, I see Jeff's rainbow Ford, and I say, oh, Jeff is here. And let's say that one day, I don't realize it, but Jeff has gone on a vacation to Timbuktu, yet he has loaned his rainbow-colored Ford to someone else who works there. And somebody comes to my office and says, hey, is Jeff here? And I say, I look out the window, I say, oh, there's Jeff's truck. Yeah, Jeff's here. They say, are you sure I can't find him anywhere? I say, look, Jeff's here. Or Jeff's in Timbuktu. <clears throat> well, that's actually true. I made a true sentence because Jeff is in Timbuktu. And I had a justification for my belief. My justification was that I saw Jeff's rainbow colored Ford outside. Um, but the justified part of the belief was that Jeff is here. Yet the, the absurdity that I threw on the end was that Jeff's in Timbuktu, and that's the truth part. So now we have to ask the question, did I say a truth or not? No. No? Now, I, mathematically, yes. Realistically, no. You didn't say a truth. Let me ask you an, a, another question. You didn't intend to say it. Well, I did intend to say a truth. Well, you didn't intend to say the truth you said. You could have just as easily said Kalamazoo. Well, yeah, and and and, but I I lucked out on that one. Speaking of luck, I want to I want to talk about another story where where mathematical truth comes into play, and and we've probably all uh, anyone who's been a poker player has has dealt with this. So I want to talk about the story of Lucky Pete and Almost Good Enough Joe who are playing poker. Did you pick these names? Yes, those are my names. Um, so Lucky Pete and Almost Good Enough Joe are playing, and Lucky Pete has gotten six uh, 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 straight flushes. It's ridiculous. And every time, Almost Good Enough Joe has a good hand. He has a boat or he has quads or something. And Almost Good Enough Joe says, I'm going to get you this time. And and Lucky Pete always turns to him and say, well, uh, you've, you've got a royal flush or I'm going to take this pot. And they throw down their hands and boom, Lucky Pete has that, that straight flush, takes the pot six times in a row. Well, they're coming up on the seventh hand. And almost good enough Joe says, I'm not going to be a sucker again. He goes, I got a, I got a boat. I think I got this one. And Lucky Pete, he didn't have anything. He he, he has a, a two nine. And Lucky Pete turns to him and not says, five nine. no, he didn't have five nine. He'd win with five nine. And he's got a two nine. And uh, uh, Lucky Pete turns to him and says, well, you've got a rural flush or I'm taking this pot. And almost good enough, Joe says, ah, screw it, I fold. And Lucky Pete took the pot. Did Lucky Pete lie? I mean, what he said was... No, what he said was true. Yeah. Well, well, why is that true, and the other one isn't? I don't know. I'm trying, I'm trying to get there because that it is a true statement. Mm -hmm. it, it is a true statement to say that if you don't have this, I'm going to win the pot. Now, because, now, it didn't become true until he folded. Right. But that's the action that made it true. The other one wasn't true because the uh, the stipulation was that what, whoever was, was there at the, uh, the location, and he wasn't. But he was there or in Timbuktu, which he was in Timbuktu. Well, I guess if, that, if he was in Timbuktu, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah so okay, that yeah, story, yeah. he had okay. vacation yeah. to Timbuktu. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that would be true, too. Okay, I understand. Yeah. So we get into these oddities of language <coughs> where we, uh, uh, Tarski has, has tried to um, construct this mathematical model of language that really well makes these crisp de definitions for truth in, in, a, in a very correspondence-like way. But by introducing these these oper operations, he has uh, then kind of taken this this quirk of language where we exploit these operations 
and made things that generally are are intended to be lies. I think, especially in the case of the the, the bluff and poker, yeah, and made them a truth, which is is kind of an odd quirk of the system. Part of the best thing about a bluff is telling a partial truth. Well, and, and so the best thing about a lie, really. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, 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 same thing, right? But but exactly. Yeah. yeah. But we've taken we've taken this and kind of justified the lie because if we can put an or clause on there and say some little truth, you know, I could say, you know, I'm I, I'm going to nuke Iran uh, or grass is green. Now that'd be a weird statement, and I think everybody would kind of cock their head at it. But all of a sudden, if you had no intention of nuking Iran, you would have said a true statement, which it's kind of an odd feature there. Yeah, yeah, I, you know? I, I can see that. Um. And he, Tarski, actually ends up doing a lot of work on paradoxical truths. Now, uh, these questions have actually been asked since the very beginning of the philosophy of truth uh, started. Uh, so I'm going I'm to give you one. There are a ton of these, so we're not going to go through all of them, but I'll, I'll go through one. Are you ready? Yep. I need you to tell me if, if this next sentence is a truth or a false. Ready? Yep. This sentence is false. It's truth. So it's false. It's a truth to say this sentence is false. Which not, makes it false. Not applicable. Yeah. Not applicable. Okay. It can't be either. Which in, in introduces a um, an interesting court because we, we have these the these these various paradoxes where any resolution to the question self contradicts. Uh, there's another one where instead of taking one thing, because because one of the the arguments is well you can only do that if if you reference yourself right you can make these weird paradoxes, so so one talks about two people who are sitting there and and uh, s s someone says well the next sentence Mike's going to say is true and then Mike turns to you and says well the sentence that John just said is false, well and then you can get you can get into all these these recursive things. Uh, and these paradoxes seem to break every single theory presented so far of truth. Um, so it, it's been a big problem to, to, to people who believe in a truth theory, believe that truth means something uh, in order to say that, uh, well, pre present a coherent theory of truth that explains this sentence. Um, it's a very difficult proposition. Have I lost people here? No, I yeah. no, yeah, I, I, I understand this one. You lost me when you were reading. Well, that was some of the best part of the podcast. Yeah, we can't yeah, just yeah. deprive our listeners of that. Um, it was when Mike and I had the bird fight. Yeah, it was kind of fun. Yeah, that was. This coffee's good now too. Now we realize that it's okay. Um, These were the things we used to do before video. Do you too. want to talk about the the liar here that you you were talking about? Yeah, I, I do, and I'm I'm trying to to uh, uh, catch back up. Um, Did you get ahead of yourself? I, I, well, I, I seem to have forgotten all my notes here. Um, have, since while you look, I have a lot of paper that I really want to throw at the camera just because I think it would just look to see cool, what would happen. But I'm fairly certain I would miss or knock the camera over. Oh, it's just this small. Chunk it. Let's see. That was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. We should get streamers one year and just that shoot them fun. at it. And, yeah, yeah, for our New Year's show. That, would be, like that would be really, really cool. That would be fun. So you want to talk about realism then? Yeah, we can, we can go ahead and uh, talk. So realism is related to correspondence theory, right? Yes, yeah, so realism is, is related to correspondence theory. So... Um, a realist believes that the world exists objectively, independently of the ways that we think about it or describe it. Um, and our thoughts and claims about the world must be supported and um, that they support uh, bivalence. Now, by bivalence, this kind of gets back to the paradox we were talking about earlier. Uh, we say that everything in the world has... A true or a false value. Anything that exists in the everything? world. Everything? Everything. I have a true or false value? Any any statement you can every, oh, state, okay. every statement yeah. has okay. it. Just wanted yeah. to be clear. I, well, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm voting your value is false. I'm just going to throw yeah. that out there. I voted yours is false already. Mine, mine is true. I started mine first. 
And so you were false first, and I was. That's, I, I, I reject your reality and insert my own, and in mine, mine is true. It's a good quote. Which one was that? Yes. That was uh, Mythbusters. I, I wasn't asking who said that. I was asking which truth theory that was. Shh. Our audience I knows. Okay. So uh, we can go through realism and more depth, but realism. Uh, oh no! I don't want another one. <laughs> is is basically just coherence theory. So it, you know, to go back through yeah. that. Uh, we, we would we would just it's correspondence theory sorry uh, correspondence yeah. theory so to go back through that we will really be repeating ourselves but we need to, to quickly touch on realism because by touching on realism it allows us to get to anti-realism which is is a little bit different thing um, verification I think is I like anti-realism already sorry, yeah go ahead. verificationism is a theory of truth the claim is not that verificationism is the most important uh, epistemic, no, epistemic sorry, notion, but that truth is just verifiability. As with the kind of realism we considered, uh, this view expresses its metaphysical commitments in its explanation of the nature of truth. Truth is not, to this view, a fully objective matter independent of us or our thoughts instead truth is constrained by our ability to verify and is thus constrained by our ep epistemic situation what they're getting here is that uh that okay epistemology is the, the study of of finding truth yes it, right yes so what they're getting at here is that truth can only it can only be true if you can objectively prove it. Well, it, what they're saying is you have to, and, and prove is a strong word because we get into what well, does they that use mean? the word verify. Verify, right. yeah. So what what they say is you have to have some kind of agreed upon test, and if that test verifies true, then it is a truth. If it does not verify true, it is not a truth. And we actually see this play out in science a lot. Um, so, for instance. Uh, in the, I think it was the 40s, when we were first kind of discovering quantum theories of physics. Okay. We had these two buckets that we put everything into. Waves and particles. Mm -hmm. And we asked ourselves, what is a photon? And we did the particle test. And we said, oh, it, it's true that it is, it is a particle. And then we did the wave test. And we said, oh, it's true that it's a wave. Now... If you had a coherence theory of truth and you had a belief that things are either a particle or a wave, this might be a really disturbing idea to you. Yeah, uh, similar to uh, plasma in the uh, latter 20th century. Yeah, yeah. but if, if, if you're an anti-realist and, and you, you're, you, you like this verification idea, then whether or not these two truths clash with each other is irrelevant. The point is you had a reasonable test on which you 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 can be true to both. Yes, and yes, it checked true. Yes, it checked true. That's fine. You can verify both truths, so it, they're both true. They both, and so yeah. it all comes down to any given test. Can this be verified? And I like that. I like that. I, I like that concept. I think that makes sense to me. That if you meet the tests of something, that it, that that it, that it is true, and that you can be true to be more than one thing. Yeah, you know, it, uh, I'm a history teacher, and I'm a you know. A husband and I'm a father. Those are all true statements. Yeah. Yeah. I, so so I, I think the same thing could be said about this. Well, and it would seem that that would, um, that would solve the issue of somebody with uh, genuine, uh, truly held beliefs that are delusions, according to everybody else. Um, as if, because not saying objectively prove, but rather... Um, objectively verify kind of to me lends itself more toward um finding a, a, a certain a certain number of people within a, a given group believing that that thing to be true and i think that's well, to, risky for sure uh, to me to me this goes i'm gonna harken back to our uh, shintoism episode this harkens back to the, the statement that one can be both a Shinto and a Buddhist. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, you, you, both are true, even though they're they're vastly different things. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, yeah. I, I think that's that's the test that they would that they would accept in that. Yeah. Well, the, the, uh, I agree with what you just said. There have been some problems that have been brought up with a verificationist 
uh, theory of truth. Yeah, it seems well, like don't a tell me about utterly them because democratic found what I'm happy way with now. to um, define truth, which is dangerous as fuck. Well, uh, beyond that, so there are certain assumptions we make in life that uh, escape verification, but seem probably true. So let me let me give you an example. Uh, we assume that our universe is uh, homogenous, more or less. As you go out in the universe, any one corner looks about the same as any other corner. And we've, we've more or less observed the homogeneity of it. Homogeneity? Hom anyway. We've more or less observed that it's homogenous. Homogenosity. Yet, homogenosity. That's the word. We've more or less observed it's homogenosity. It's the same. Okay. <laughs> go ahead. Um, and we can also look at the, the, the elements that break down. And see that those kind of maintain that. But there is a limit to how far out in the universe we can see. We, we have a horizon past which we can't observe anymore. We call it our observable universe. So if somebody was to make the really reasonable claim that in some reach beyond the observable universe, but in the actual universe, that there existed uranium, a verificationist would have to resolve that false because we have no way to test that uranium exists there. So if you can't verify that fact, that's not a fact. That is a fact of falsehood. Well, what happens if you turn it around and you said it the opposite way that I'm going to resolve that because I can't prove it that there's no uranium? Well, you can't prove that either. Well, so your verification, that statement would also be wrong. Yes. Yes. So, so, so th that gets into the fact that uh, uh, there is no necess necessity of uh, uh, coherence here because you would assume that if uh, uh, and they don't believe in bivalence uh, uh, is that the right word? Yeah. So that was the word you used earlier. Yeah. So they don't believe in bivalence. So while you would you would assume in your mind that if uranium exists as false, then uranium does not exist as true. They wouldn't assume those two mean the same. They could both be false statements. So you have this this situation where something can can, can be both true and false at the same time because of two different statements. Yeah, and you could you could so God. Yeah, that, I was about to about to say that. Like, so if you don't have a test to verify that God exists, and you don't have a test to verify that God doesn't exist, both and God can both exist and not exist. Honestly, He's Schrodinger cat. That frankly seems kind of godlike to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. No, it's a, whenever you start putting things that way, it starts to make sense to you, though. Mm -hmm. All right, so talk to me about deflationism. Okay, so uh, deflationism says that there is no truth in the world. This was during the Carter administration, right? Oh, never mind. I like this. No, one. no, that never mind. That was inflationism. I never yes, yeah, yes. straight. Yeah, yeah. That was that was before Operation that was, Twist. Yeah, that's that was, all yeah. thing. Uh, so deflationism says that there is no truth in the world. It is just an artifact of language. Yep, that's me. That has arisen as a convenient way to agree with someone. That's not you. To say that's something you. is true is necessarily redundant. No. So if I make the statement, I like that one. If I make the statement that it's true that there is a newspaper hanging on the wall, why didn't I just make the statement there is a newspaper hanging on the wall? Why did I need to say it's true? That seems like a ridiculous add-on to the statement. Mm -hmm. And that any truth statement is just a redundancy of the original statement itself. And that the, the origins of the truth statement was, I would say, there's a newspaper hanging on the wall. And I'd say, it's true. And then maybe Mike say, it's true. And then maybe Crazy Alex over here would say, that's false. Well, that was just you saying, I agree, I agree, I disagree. That's all it was. I, I would disagree with you because the Jacksonville Progress does not qualify as a newspaper. See? Okay. Well, there it goes. So, so we were there's just... There's a piece of paper hanging on the wall. That yeah. True. So we it were looks just, a lot like the newspaper. It, it, has, it has a lot of the, the, the characteristics of a newspaper except for news. So we were just kind of taking votes on whether our individual realities kind of uh, uh, meshed with the reality presented by one person. And the idea of, of truth really doesn't mean anything outside of, I agree. That's all truth means. Well, I think that that, that's, that is what truth means uh, to, to the extent that something is true because, and that, th this is hard to get to, something is true because we've agreed that it's true. Right. But it's not I mean, a reality. I mean, but but not, I mean, at, at one point, at one point, it, it, if, you, if that's your acceptance, at one point, there, it was a true statement that the earth was flat because people agreed to it. And I think that's dangerous. I do, too. I think it's very dangerous. Yeah. There and, is, and I think that deflationism would argue that just because people believed that, that it was never true. No, they would argue that, 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 that nothing is true. Not, right. 
Nothing at all is true. That gravity doesn't exist. Nothing is true. No, I don't think that they would argue that gravity doesn't exist. The, ar the statement that gravity exists is irrelevant. They would argue that we've agreed gravity exists, yeah. but that has no bearing on the reality of gravity. Yeah, gravity, yeah. you know. All, all, all you can judge is the agreement of people. You can't yeah. actually judge reality, and, and, and which kind of makes sense because reality changes. Yeah. Our reality changes at, uh, over time. Yeah, and we, we, what we've tried to do, a deflationist would argue, uh, you've, you've heard me say before, the map is not the territory. Uh, there's, there's actually an, a, a, an old uh, proverb about some guy visiting an, a neighboring village, and, and he says, oh, we have, we have great maps where I come from. We, we, build, we build huge maps as big as this room, and, and, and the guy retorts. He goes, well, once we, we built a map as, as big as the entire county, and he's, he's astounded. He goes, really? What did you do with it? He goes, well, we, we, we laid it out over the county, and, and soon it created problems because the crops couldn't get sun and, and the animals were covered up. So eventually we just folded the map up and used the county itself. And 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 the 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 moral of the story is the map is just a model of the county. Yep. The county is the county, and and uh, the the deflationists would argue that what we have done is we have taken <laughs> in saying these truths, we have taken the map and then tried to say that the model of the universe is the universe, and and tried to bend the universe to fit in, it and it never will because the model necessarily must be sure, simpler. Sure. So um, there's one other kind of vein of these. I don't think we need to go too deep into it that, that we need to talk about. And I don't remember the exact term, but um, it says that um, to distinguish between these different theories, and there are people who cherry pick some of them, and there are people who take all of them, is really a confusion. It says that uh, where different words can mean that a word can mean... A different thing in different contexts. Sure, sure. We call them, you know, uh, uh, synonyms. Uh, no, 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 that's not synonym. What's the same word mean something different? It's a synonym. No, that's no. two different. Same thing. That's two different words that mean the same thing. What's this? Homonym. Or just, yeah, homonym. Yeah. Same so, word. Sound the same. The same well, they word. They sound the same, but are different. Like where a word has a definition and then a connotation? No, no, no. Like the word bus could mean the thing that drives people to school or it can mean a long thing where you plug things into. Those are both buses. Yeah, but they're, they're homonyms. Each other. Yeah. yeah, homonym. So Sound the same. But they're... I thought they were spelled different if they were oh, homonyms. Antonym. 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 Homonym that... spelled, spelled different. You're right. Anyway, antonym. whatever that, that thing right. is. <laughs> hey, but... it's been a long time. I'm a history teacher. <laughs> but, but... <laughs> We've spent a long time. But they that. argue that truth is one of these and that truth antonym? can mean different oh. things yeah, antonym, right. depending yeah, Oh. On, I think antonyms. To the word is an opposite meaning yeah, to another. Yeah, antonym is opposite. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Whatever. Yeah, well, get off it. <laughs> that truth can mean different things used in different contexts, and we don't have to define one thing that is truth. Oh. That when I use it talking about math, it it's a coherence truth, and when I use it talking about this can, it's 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 a correspondence truth, and uh, uh, when I use it to say that Santa Claus is coming, then it's 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 a utilitarian truth, and those are all fine. They can truth can mean different things. Things, depending on how it's used oh, in the sentence. You're right, it is homonyms. I was thinking homophones. It still doesn't matter. <laughs> to this moment, it doesn't matter. A truth. Yeah. A truth. Yeah. Yeah. So so anyway, we, we, and, and they can they cherry pick different ones they like, but that's that's there's that belief floating down the ether that these can all be true. All these different theories of truth? Can be true. Well and and so what I find to be interesting here is that I suspect the reason that certain people can use different theories of truth um, is because we're talking about different questions. Mm -hmm. um, questions about the structure of our universe, I think, can probably be addressed with one theory of truth. Uh, questions about um, individual people's different perceptions of a of the same situation can probably be answered with a different theory of truth. And so I wonder if those people who are are saying are trying to as you call it cherry pick aren't actually referencing different truth aspects, different things that we're trying to find the truth in. Yeah. Yeah, well and and I think I think I think I think it's hard to, to point to a, such a large group of beliefs of and, and and assign one 
truth value to mm. them. But uh, uh, agreement I think, value. Yeah, I think that uh, there's probably some truth in what you're saying. I think you we agree? use whatever's convenient to us. Yeah. Yeah. And on that, that note, I found a quote in my research that I think s s brings this episode together so beautifully. I had to write it down to share here. Is it expert, textbook, choking smokers? Don't you think the Joker laughs at you? No, it is. Good, 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 good. Language is a finger pointing at the moon, and we are all untrained dogs. Okay. I don't know about me, but that's definitely true for you guys. <laughs> I'm a trained dog, damn it. <laughs> yes. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, or a finger. One so of the two. Did we make any progress today in here? I, I think we found some some understandings and, and got a chance to to kind of question um, how much we really oh, knew so about what like... truth was. Uh, sorry, my phone is being an idiot. Uh, but we, we got to question a little bit about what we know about what truth really you know, is. The longer I do this show, the less I know. I think that's the point of philosophy. Yeah, yeah, but aren't you supposed to learn something and, and, and know more when you're done? Oh, we're learning are, all sorts of well, shit. You, you we're are, learning. You're learning what you don't know, though. The more you know, the more you know you don't know. No, no. Duh. I think that's how it goes. Oh, that sounds good to me. Yeah. I thought you were going to go with the old old NBC uh, commercial. The more you know. No. Remember those? Yes, I do. Yeah. I, those, I, little, I, I, I was hoping that, that, that you weren't too young to remember that. So. Barely. They were fading out. Yeah. <laughs> They were right there with Schoolhouse Rock when I was a kid, which, by the way, was 45 years old this month. Oh, happy birthday, Schoolhouse yeah, yeah, Rock. Yeah, which is actually younger than me, and that just tells me something. So, Not much. Not much. I remembered them. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. This was a lot of fun, guys, except for the part where John read to us. Um, that was the best part of the show. Yeah. It's, uh, it was interesting, anyway. The beer was terrible. Yes, the beer I, was horrible. I really hope that any of our listeners who, uh, first of all, John, I'm, I'm going to formally request that during your reading you put this particular formula up on the screen mm -hmm. um request denied God damn it. i am also going to formally request that in the future when you read that you do it with cartoon voices mickey request mouse. Denied start again. working on mickey yeah, mouse yeah, yeah. Can, can we uh, get oh, our don't producer do mickey, to, they'll sue us get our producer to adjust the voice oh yeah you're there reading. we go that'll do get, get your batman's voice or something i don't think he knows how to work the voice augmenter okay. do you i can show him <laughs> do you know how to work the yes. voice augmenter i bet i could play with it yeah i do okay i don't all right, so are we done here? Well, uh, one more thing that we need to do before we wrap up, and that's our recommendation. So our recommendation this week, you know, in, in the last few, I've tried to theme the recommendation with the show. This one, I'm just going to do something fun. And it is a YouTube channel called Dong, D-O-N-G. Oh, my God. Yeah. And it, it stand, it's it's by Vsauce, if, okay. if anyone's familiar with Vsauce. And it stands for Do Online Now, guys. And all it is, every week, they go through and they talk about all the fun things, interesting things you can do on the internet that you don't go to because you go to three sites like YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and maybe, you know, your work side and your school side or whatever. Is this the one that had like the... the pranks you can play on it has like, the weird pranks website. it has fun things you can order it has weird games you can play it is everything you can do online check it out but i gotta tell you i've got this terrible fear right now that somebody's gonna type in dong to try and go to this thing and they're gonna end up at a porn site type it into youtube not google <laughs> don't type dong into google do not type dong onto google but yeah it's called dong. save search before you put it in youtube too there just, you go. Yeah, just, be sure. just just make sure yeah but yeah, it's, it's fun. It's uh, or, or type in do online now, guys. Yeah. Well, the, the channel is called Dong. That's fine. I'm sure yeah. they have it tagged appropriately. Probably. Probably. But it's by Michael from Vsauce, and it, it's a lot of fun. Check it out. Sounds good to me. Hey, go. if they wanted to support the show, what could they do? They can. Dance on top of a street corner somewhere and shake their butts and earn a little money and then send it to us. What? What? Hey, if you're, if you're going to do that, what? have somebody hold a video camera and send us the video. Yeah, the video is worth that. way more than the money you earn. <laughs> We're going to put that up. It depends on how cute they are. I mean, who yeah. knows? Who knows? Uh, I honestly... On YouTube... I gotta tell you, the I, less cute they are, the better. I gotta tell you, when this show's over, I'm going out the street corner and I'm shaking my. Group yeah, there, are, there are two ways you can, you can be really good looking or horrendous looking. You don't want to be in the middle. Either That's, way, either way, you're all right. Yeah. Um, anyway, no, you can go to. I will be shaking my groove thing later. This was a six point something. Did I say right? groove thing? No, I said groove thing. Okay. This beer is only a six point something, right? Yeah. 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 Okay, just making sure. It doesn't take a lot to make me shake my groove thing. Um, That's true. If you want to support us, you can go to patreoncom slash sixpackphilosophy 
coffee. Uh, you can become a patron, get some cool perks, some extra content, uh, early access live streams. We got all kinds of stuff up there. Get some shirts. Some you hoodies. cannot do that on not Patreon. Not this one. You cannot no, not on, on Patreon. But if swag is more your thing, you can go to teespring.com slash sixpackphilosophy and we have a whole store there where you can get various swag. You get cool stuff there. Yeah, shirts, uh, little wall hangers. Uh, porn? No. We don't have, when did we you don't put have... porn on our store? Well, it's coming. It's coming. Just just wait. <laughs> I bet it is. Just wait. <laughs> After I go shake my groove thing, we'll be selling videos of that. Yeah. This is not getting better. This no. is not getting better. This episode has gone like, I don't know where it went, but it went it went away. I don't know, man. I think the, the, I feel like we got our groove back. I, I, I think that this is our show, you know? Yeah. All right. Well, guys, thank, thank you, you very much. Yes. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's been a pleasure. We hope you guys have had a good time because, as you can tell, we certainly have. See you next week. Cheers. Cheers. Six Pack Philosophy is supported by independent philosophers just like you. If you would like to support us, go to sixpackphilosophy.com and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.